Hi class, my name is Mohammed Prince. This is my week four discussion post. So um, the issue that I'm going to discuss is um, inadequate public defense. Um, so uh, many of the shortcomings in, pu- in regard to public defense are due to the fact that it's a government provided service. Um, when looking at um, private defense and public defense, they are uh, two very different forms of the same service. People often have trouble even getting a public defender to return a phone call. It's easy to understand why many people don't feel that public defense is an adequate defense at all. Public defenders are frequently overworked and underpaid. This is why people who can afford it feel more comfortable hiring a private law firm for defense. One of the re- biggest reasons why public defense is underperforming so badly is because it's constantly underfunded by the government. These public defenders are overworked, they're given huge caseloads, public defenders are not given enough time to dedicate the proper attention to each of their cases. Public defenders offices lack the resources um, to make their clients feel and they make their clients feel more like a number rather than a person. When, um, When someone, when a public defender can't even make time to return your phone call, then the time they dedicate to their cases surely comes into into question. Um, The lack of manpower and resources within the organization is very alarming, especially when the service they provide is so important to the public's freedom and well-being. This is a, you know, a critical cause for concern and it's been that way for a long time. So analysis number one um, is the duty, which is the need for public defense. So um, 82% of felony defendants in state courts require publicly funded lawyers. Um, And the Sixth Amendment guarantees a criminal defendant the right to have an attorney defend him or her at trial. That right is not dependent on the um, defendant's ability to pay an attorney. If the defendant cannot afford a lawyer, the government is required to provide one. So the duty here is proper defense. Um, A lot of these people are facing many, many years in jail. Um, Public defense is for criminal um, cases. And these are people who who need legal defense, but aren't really giving adequate defense at all. So so the analysis. So for uh, categorical imperatives, Kant defines defines it as commands or moral laws that all persons must follow, regardless of their desires or um, other extenuating circumstances. As morals, these imperatives are binding on everyone. So uh, morally, you know, it's it's really immoral to provide a service um, that's so important um, and provide an inadequate um, version of that service to to everyone. You know, they need to lower the caseloads and devote more time and attention to their clients. And um, Aristotle's virtue theories, um, virtue uh, ethics is a broad term for theories that emphasize the role of character and virtue in moral philosophy, rather than doing one's duty or acting in order to bring about good consequences. So. Um, this is uh, basically having a good character and higher morals. So um, alternatives that uh, I came up with for this issue is to grant additional funding in public defense when the demand for public defenders increases um, and then lower the caseload for public defenders to increase the quality of the service they provide and um, hire a private firm to help with their caseloads, enable workload limits for public defenders, um, and have an independent agency oversee public defense. So any of these alternatives can work. I would say um, the additional funding would help because you can get more manpower, you can lower a caseload by having more manpower, and just that additional funding whenever um, the, the demand for public defenders increases would really help, but um, any of these can work.
It's just a matter of picking one and sticking with it. So I just want to say thanks for viewing my video. Look forward to viewing um, everyone else's.